Focusing on challenges and responsibilities for a planet in transition, the first World Humanities Conference, co-organized by UNESCO, the International Council for Philosophy and Human Sciences, and Liège Together, is taking place in Liège, Belgium. What's the significance of this conference, and how can the humanities respond to current challenges? With the development of pragmatism, many turned their focus from the humanities to natural and social sciences. So why are people now starting to pay attention to the humanities once again? And how should those in the humanities deal with others' perceptions? As home to an ancient civilization, China has contributed greatly to world civilization in the past and hopes to enhance the future with the Belt and Road Initiative. How will this ambitious project assist in building and maintaining cultural ties and people-to-people -people understanding between China and other countries? With the growth of the Internet, what changes will this so-called fourth revolution bring to the future of the humanities? To what extent will technology help revitalize the humanities? The World Humanities Conference is taking place in Liège, Belgium, to re-examine the fundamental role of the humanities. Well, historically, the humanities are particularly well-placed to foster a diverse views of human society. However, they seem to have lost the ground in recent decades. It has been said that the invaluable contribution of the humanities is to move towards establishing new human values in times of greater connectivity and rising uncertainty in face of new economic, financial and social challenges. To talk about why uh, the businesses has been changing, when I'm happy to join in the studio by Yi Na, uh, Principal Research Fellow of the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. We'll also talk to Louise Osterbeck, Secretary General of the International Union of Prehistoric and Pre Pretohistoric Sciences, and also Cheng Wu, Vice President of Tencent via Satellite. And that's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Zhou Yue. And this year's uh, World Humanities Conference is on the topic of challenges and responsibilities for a planet in transition. Mm -hmm. My question is, what is the challenges and what are the responsibilities of humankind for a planet in transition? Yeah, actually, you know, the humanities is a very traditional world and has existed for a very long time. And so people uh, was was talking about the humanities and the human history a lot, but recently we find the world has changed. The world is in the transition. Mm -hmm. We found Trump, and he can everyone can speak better English than him, <laughs> and we say the brain exists, and we say uh, refugees, and we say ISIS, and we say other uh, different things happens happening now in the world. So now people now rethinking about the humanities. And we can feel we can find that the in the universities the budget are cut being mm. cut down and the, the fewer and fewer students want to uh, get into this career of the humanities studies. Mm. So that has happened all over the world. This is not only somewhere, it's ho happened all over the world. But I think it's time to for us to re recognize the how important the humanity is. Mm. Actually the uh, the full name of the subject is uh, Humanity Sciences. I'm very interested in this name. I think because we talked about the humanities a lot in the past, and we think that's different from the technology, te different from the science, and different from the e economy. Mm. But actually, the uh, the humanity is the humanities is the human sciences. Mm. It's connect to everything. It's a knowledge about ourselves and yes. our relations with the world. Yes. Uh, let's turn. To to Louise. Well, Louise, um, the wounds of uh, Second World War and after that the need to rebuild societies across the globe. Uh, we talking about challenges this world is facing, uh, for example, um, the rebuilding of cities, preserving heritage, uh, new geostrategic balances and intercultural relations have all been on the table uh, for humankind. Uh, do you think the current growing fear and uncertainty in the world about politicians, about economy, raise the profile of the study of humanities? And how can humanities study help humankind? Your question is very interesting. I, I largely agree with what Ina was uh, saying. 
Uh, and uh, it's true. Uh, you know, after the Second World War, there was a moment of uh, tremendous optimism. And people believed it would be possible uh, with a series of uh, strategies uh, to prevent another catastrophic situation as uh, uh, the world had experienced in the first half of the 20th century. Mm. And it's interesting to see what was the strategy at the time. The strategy was to create the United Nations and within the United Nations to create UNESCO, for example, and also to create the International Council for uh, Humanities, uh, for Philosophy and uh, Human Sciences. And this strategy was a humanistic strategy. At the time, uh, all the parties that had been engaged in the war knew that there were, was no technological solution and that you had to build peace uh, through uh, a convergent vision. And we are talking about a moment in the planet that was extremely divided uh, ideologically in terms of uh, mm. perspectives, but there was this common understanding that stressing those differences would lead us again into a war. And so the, the, the strategy was like that. But it was and a different time uh, I think the, after uh, the Second World War. The world is facing a totally different set of challenges. Uh, has the study of humanities and our human knowledge evolved and is it capable to address the current challenges we face? It not only it can, but it's the only way. The humanities tell us about uh, how to cope, among other things, with uncertainty. Uh, we, we are in a world where every day uh, you, are, you fear the different uh, difficulties you have mentioned before, and Ina as well, uh, uh, from violence to environmental issues, and people strive for answers, technical answers to those difficulties. And of course we need uh, technical answers too. But then we forgot to ask uh, one important question. Why? What for? Uh, how will we cope with this mm. in five years' time? What will happen in five years' time? And how are we prepared, not only for the challenges of today, but for the still unforeseen difficulties or challenges within five, 10, 15 years? Mm. And if you think back, um, all the memory we have in terms of history, of relevance, it's always connected to the humanities. Mm -hmm. you, you think of uh, major figures in history, not only as uh, politicians or leaders of empires or, what's, or, or whatever, think also of scientists. When you think of Einstein, you don't think, you think of Einstein, of course, because of theory of relativity, but you also think of Einstein, and mainly a, a, he became a popular character because of his a humanistic understanding mm. because he, he, he connected science to humanitarian issues like but, peace. But do you think the Europeans the have done a good job in bomb. terms of communicating those humanistic values? Because take Europe for example, the diversity of culture should have contributed to the continent's prosperity and cohesiveness. But look at Europe now. Europe is more divided and everybody wants to fend for themselves and they're turning their back on refugees. How do you evaluate your work in terms of humanistic values, communication? You, you are absolutely right. Uh, I think Europe did relatively well for a long time. Uh, we, we must uh, still recognize that there hasn't been a war uh, for the last uh, 70 years, and that's an achievement in Europe, because unfortunately Europe has a, a long history of internal wars. Uh, but in the most recent uh, decades, uh, first there was this um, uh, technocratic drive which uh, led uh, governments to forget about values. Uh, and uh, also there was a very naive approach to uh, cultural diversity. People started talking about cultural mm. diversity uh, as if diversity would lead uh, very easily and very fast to understanding differences and to convergence. It's not like that. Uh, China has been developing its economic initiative 
together with our cultural outreach, the Belt and Road Initiative, for example, it, it is aimed to strengthen the cooperation between Europe and China. Uh, how do you think China's over, uh, outreach uh, in this uh, kind of initiative can uh, help better communicate between different cultures, civilizations and peoples? Um, I, I think your, your question actually is strongly related to the one you just asked, uh, Yina, if you allow me to just to say that um, I fully agree with Yina in one aspect, which is a very important aspect. Uh, one of the mistakes of our current society and the way we communicate and what shows up in the media is that we, are, uh, we think that what we sometimes perceive as what is happening in the last five, ten uh, years uh, has changed structurally the way we are. It's not true. Uh, cultural transformations are long-term processes. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it's true that, as you were asking uh, in your question before, uh, probably in China, uh, certainly in Europe, uh, in other parts of the world where I have uh, d d d did my work in Africa, in Southern America, we, we assist everywhere to a growing approach to a sort of consumption society, to uh, hypervalorization of materialistic uh, uh, things, but uh, the deep down cultural roots are still there. But people tend to it's be short-sighted, as you say, bad. when they it's are facing challenges at home, right? Uh, yes, of course, but I think, uh, in a way, uh, different cultures in the world have used, um, uh, have reinforced themselves with this European approach, which is not only from capitalism, it's older. It has at least three or four thousand years of age. And this, this approach has been incorporated in processes mm. of governments in Asia, in Africa, and so on. Now, it's the time to bring into Europe and also to those countries the long-term understanding that exists in those cultures, particularly in Chinese tradition. Mm. And I think the One Belt, One Road uh, project uh, is a very interesting vision. Mm. And, and, and um, uh, the, the challenge again, I think, is uh, when becoming real, when becoming material, not to, uh, uh, to abandon the vision and to replace the vision as sometimes happens uh, in, in different projects uh, uh, and to restrict the vision to a series of infrastructures, mm. of uh, tangible roads, although they are very, of course, very important. Uh, but the, the primary vision, uh, even the name, even the references to the Silk Roads, even it's, it's uh, a vision of a multicultural uh, dialogue, but a dialogue that does not destroy mm. the diversity. But, but a dialogue in this that highly integrates, connected world, you don't worry that globalization yes. at this level and speed will level the world and make everywhere exactly the same as you said uh, because every Chinese city and every European city can look similar in the future because of globalization and technology as a leveler. Uh, here is a good contribution of the humanities for this discussion which is a very strong discussion in our society today your, your question we will all become the same now, what uh, uh, history tells us is, and anthropology is, this is impossible. It will never happen. Uh, sometimes people fear we will all, sp maybe we will all speak English in the future, or we will all speak uh, Chinese in the future. It will never happen because humans always, even if one culture is extinguished, and of course this is very bad if it happens, the existing cultures will break down. They will lead to new cultures. Think of the Roman Empire. We, we go and see and see oh, how interesting it is to visit ancient Roman cities. They were all alike. You go to a, human, uh, a Roman city and you find the theater, you find the, 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 the big uh, temples, you find the main roads. They, they had an, an urban plan that they would apply with a certain variation, but they would apply everywhere. And then it, it, 
it collapsed. It collapsed because it was not possible to keep for a long time this trend. Hmm. Diversity always exists. Just okay. think for everyone that is listening to us in this moment, let me just say this. If you have a family and if you have brothers, sisters or children, they have probably received the same education. They have probably used the same values and the same resources and they are different because that's what humans are. They are different. So don't worry. There will be cultural diversity. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your belief in tenacity and diversity of human being. Thank you so much, Louis. You've been watching Dialogue. We've been talking about the development of humanities on the earth. Don't go away. Be right back. Okay, let's come back to our discussions on humanities development. Uh, you know, you have something that you want to say about what just Louis mentioned? Yeah, because Louis talked about the cultural diversity a lot in his, uh, in his, he, his words. But a uh, very interesting part is uh, in 2005, the UNESCO has a convention of cultural diversity. Its, it's full name is uh, uh, protect and promote the expression of the cultural diversity. Mm. Yeah, and China is one of the country to sign it, but it's initiated by the France and by the Canada, and because they want to protect their culture, culture goods trade, mm. and, and to against the Be United because States. Because you believe there is a threat to cultural diversity yeah. because of globalization. That is what you said. The globalization has threatened uh, and threatened the world, and the now and the. The, actually, the developed countries noticed it first, mm -hmm. so they initiated this convention. But China is one of them. But after 10 years, uh, last year, UNESCO has uh, published an, another uh, report to examine the 10 years uh, convention the result. And it comes out that the China and India has uh, uh, growth as fast in the culture, goods, and service trade mm -hmm. in the world. So the you are saying that it is not that threatening that we will lose cultural diversity because of economic growth. Uh, that is one uh, evidence to us because that's a surprise to everyone because we think the globalization has some problems, but the the uh, statistics, the data told us the the the, the developed pink countries like China and India, mm. their growth, especially their culture. The people said that China is leading a new globalization. Mm. I don't know whether that's true, but I think that's very interesting because uh, now the China and the, t the technology put us into a different role I, I in the transition. I want you to weigh in on yeah. technology's role mm -hmm. in humanities yeah. development. Because mm -hmm. some people say technology has taken over some of human faculties. Yeah. Because of the internet, a lot of people are spending a lot of time on the internet. Mm -hmm. Because of mobile phones, people' attention span has been shortened. Mm -hmm. What is the technology's impact on humanities, on our knowledge about ourselves and, and the world? Actually, as the technology being a t imp very most important tool in our human life, and now people talking more and more about the threat and about by the technology. Especially recently we know the robot can uh, write poems. Mm -hmm. The robot can win the chess game. Whether yeah. that's a poem, we can argue, but they can yeah. write something yeah, that they can look write like something. poem. Yeah. Uh, there is a quote I, I, I said before that the, the, by the Tim Cook. Mm -hmm. I think uh, recently, we uh, now realized that the, the big companies like Google, like Facebook, they're doing a lot of things related to, to culture and the humanities, but mm. actually they just use it as a tool. tool. Mr. Cheng Wu, Vice President of Tencent Company, uh, to share his insights. Well, uh, Mr. Cheng, the Internet has obviously created a lot of uh, values and also avenues of human applications for people uh, from around the world. But on the other hand, it also being said, the internet is exaggerating uh, fragmented messages and making this world uh, more like a tribal society. What is your take on the internet's role in, in the world, especially on humanities development? Uh, I think that is a very good question and a valid concern. Uh, fragmented and timely information acquisition has already introduced the uh, a new work style and lifestyle uh, 
for sure it comes along with a sense of anxieties. Uh, but when you look at the response speed and efficiencies, those have been uh, greatly improved. Let's mm -hmm. take uh, uh, publishing as an example. Uh, in the traditional publications, uh, a book can only be published when entirely completed. Uh, and also it takes a very long time for books to be printed and shipped to, uh, to the bookstores around the country. Mm. Uh, let alone uh, paying the royalties and for the authors to gather royalties take a very long time. But nowadays, in, uh, with the internet, all the authors can publish in their novels uh, or their critic works chapter by chapter when they still are writing uh, the books. And they can get instant uh, readers' feedback and they can use those kind of instant feedback as inspiration to continue their writing. I and agree. Also uh, there's, they can get there's greater opinion. efficiency and better productivity because of internet. But on the other hand, don't you think it also poses mm -hmm. a problem to humanities because some of the humans lost their fa faculties to think critically, to think deep, and also to reflect on their lives because they don't have time to do that. Yeah, and definitely I think uh, with uh, internet development, there is a fragmented re timing and uh, uh, fragmented reading. Uh, and uh, comes along with a fragment, there is a kind of a timely incentive mechanism. It is pretty much the rule that we have seen that in the computer games. But I don't think uh, it is a barrier for the traditional humanities. Uh, on the contrary, I think uh, that new tool and that new model opens a new door and a new world uh, for the traditional hum humanity development. And do you worry that internet development and uh, transcontinental communication uh, will create homogenization of culture uh, because of the digitalized world? Whether tools like the internet uh, will create uh, the culture homogenization still depends on scientific research to confirm. Um, uh, with that said, I still believe that humanity, humanity is still the fundamental factors. Um, with the internet world, everything is being connected with, uh, with anything. And the information is all over the world. It is a matter of whether you, will, you are willing to see it or you are not willing to see it. Um, ultimately, I believe that it is the human to choose tools mm -hmm. For, instead of the let, tools let me give you an to example. manipulate For example, the human being. A Tibetan living in Lhasa is probably reading the same thing and is consuming the same cultural product as a Chinese, uh, a Han Chinese here in Beijing. So they have lost some of their folk customs, their traditional cultural celebrations, and, and local civilizations because of internet development. Isn't it the case? Uh, I think the internet provides all different kinds of choices. And because the internet is equal to everyone, to everybody, so all different kinds of information can all be put onto uh, in, in the internet. And anyone in the society can read uh, any information he or she wants. So I didn't think that uh, the internet uh, has created the cultural homologization. Hmm. I do believe that it facilitates and nurture the diversities. I believe Tencent is a creative uh, business. How do you think humanities can factor in in the creative industry development if one has to keep alive the tradition and also uh, develop cutting edge new ideas in the creative industry? Uh, you all, uh, I agree that the, today's society is changing so fast. And uh, we do need that to preserve the traditional culture. But the best way to preserve the traditional culture is not only for inheritance, mm. but we need to find the creative ways and the new ways uh, to weave those traditional culture into the today's life. Uh, Tencent, as an internet-based technology and culture company, we have been trying all kinds of dis uh, different possibilities to do that. Uh, for example, uh, we use traditional culture as creative inspiration for product creation. Mm. Uh, we also uh, invite uh, different kind of uh, uh, humanity experts to leverage the traditional culture 
uh, as communication and marketing. Uh, uh, and also, we in the past, we have been working with the symbolic traditional Chinese culture heritage, like uh, the Palace Museum, like the Great Wall. Mm. We want uh, the creativity of the traditional culture to be reflect, reflected in the technology products. Right. And in, in addition to that, uh, starting from three years ago, we have been working with UNESCO uh, to create an uh, open digital library of the traditional games. And the team, uh, the joint task team, has been uh, visiting four different countries, including mm -hmm. Mongolia, including Greek, including Brazil, and uh, trying to find the traditional uh, games and uh, bring them to the new life. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, yeah. as the internet enabled, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, you go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so as an internet-enabled technology and culture company, we will continue to strengthen the partnership with uh, SIPS, with uh, UNESCO, uh, with Palace Museum, and with Great Wall. On the other side, uh, we are going to expand uh, those kind of experimental from uh, uh, online literature, from online comic and animation, from, from online games, into other content areas like uh, arts, like music. So we do believe that through this kind of cooperation and exploring, we can uh, uh, provide more foods and more possibilities for the traditional humanities. So Mr. Chung's basic point is that technology is, in, is neutral. It can preserve heritage. It can also develop new cultural forms. There n doesn't necessarily be conflicts uh, because it's a new tool. This is also what we believe in? Uh, actually, it's very interesting you asked about uh, Edward about the Tibetan examples. Actually, uh, when the internet comes out, people worried about that, and especially when the people doing the protection of the uh, intangible culture, culture heritages, and they think, wow, when the Tibetan people now they use English, they use Chinese, now they they don't talk their mother language anymore yep. and they they were lost to the culture and Identity. they will yeah they were lost that but actually during this uh, years of uh, development the whole world's uh, development by the internet and we realized that there's really had some uh, real some uh, worried things happened actually because the languages the the, the minority languages are now disappearing very fast but in, in another, another way um, a lot of culture diversity cultures have uh, gained a lot through uh, through the internet so people are better informed about your culture because yeah. of internet and technological advance yeah that's true we have more chance to speak ourselves all right. Yeah. And on that optimistic note, we have to end uh, this edition mm -hmm. of Dialogue. Thank you very much, Nina. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching this edition of Dialogue on CGTN. I'm Zhou in Beijing. Goodbye.